back after you go to the event. It's been 24 hours, mate. Eh? <laughs> 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 oh no, I just went straight through the smoke then. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of TA Outdoors. I am in the woods and this might be familiar to you, this shelter over here. I have done a video here in the past and it was built by these two chaps, Ben and Lewis, B&L Bushcraft on Instagram. If you want to watch that previous video, I'm going to put a link to it in the description below. Uh, they've done an awesome job, I'll show you the shelter in a minute, but today we have been working on a storage shed. Storage, yeah. storage, just a bit of anything kind of storage area that's built on the same design as the cabin itself. So again, Ben Lewis will talk about that a bit later. We have the fire going. It's cooking up nicely. We've had a bit of lunch. We're three o'clock in the afternoon and we need to get some, uh, some tents set up. So we're going to get the tents up. Unfortunately, there's not really enough room, is there, in there? For... You can squeeze two in. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a, a tight squeeze in there but <clears throat> we'll show you that again in a bit and uh, yeah we'll get the tent set up and then probably get the next meal going <laughs> <laughs> So just to update you all on what's going on uh, since the last scene of us cutting down some hazel, we're going to build that shelter, the rest of that shelter tomorrow and hopefully try and plough on through and get it finished. There's been a slight change in the audio on the episode and that's because the main camera is dying, the microphone on it. So I've just rigged up the GoPro with a small microphone here and just holding it out of shot. So we've been outside, uh, we've had a fire going, we've had some dinner. We're now going to move into the uh, cosy little tiny cabin that Ben and Lewis have built and... Um, Hopefully, you know, just relax by the fire, have a drink and just chill out.
So we are in in the uh, the den, and we're getting some getting some roasted marshmallows going over this fire grate. This was your latest upload, wasn't it, boys? This mm. one. Yeah. And I think it's doing a treat. Look at the draw that chimney's getting now. When are you putting it on Airbnb? Next week. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Absolutely awesome. Very cosy. We've got candle there. We've got these new these lanterns are a new addition. I like those because they're they're concealed as well. Yeah. And then you've got another one over there at the back. By the uh, the removable gable end. It's all it's all really well thought through. Right, guys, we're almost winding in for the night. <clears throat> we're, we've come further into the woodland, well, further out of the woodland, actually, into the open a bit more. Uh, and we were just, <laughs> as you've been geeking out on the uh, head torches, and I just wanted to show you Ben's head torch because it is ridiculously powerful. What is it, Ben? So it's an Olight H2R. Yeah. Um, 2,300 <laughs> lumens. It's uh, a load of gibberish. <laughs> show them how bright it is. Let me turn yeah, this torch off. Hold on. This light. Right, go for it. Look at it! Something so small. So is that the the turbo setting? This is turbo, so it's as bright as it can get. And uh, that's impressive for such a tiny head torch. Yeah. Compared so. to mine, which is about a quarter of that. And it and it and it breaks off as well into a little hand torch. Very cool. How long's the battery life at that? At this, about an hour. And then sort of and medium then, settings. So we can, um, if we go to, oh, this is high, so yeah. we'll have two hours on this. Two hours, that's so good. Two hours like this. And you wouldn't really need it on high, to be honest. That's more than you'd ever need. Yeah. Just going to kick some leaves up against the old Lavu. Stop any draft or air. Coal there coming in for the night, we're about to call it a night now, so just trying to kick it up just, just to keep a bit warmer. The canvas, anyway, on this tent tends to keep things a little bit warmer than a modern day tent, but it's also really dark in there. So I hope they don't sleep in anymore. This is set up here. Tripod backpack sleeping bag and I'm on the sleeping uh, sleeping pad as well the exterm so on top of a tarp because this is still really damp down here still very damp but should be a comfortable sleep tomorrow we plan to carry on building the shelter probably get a few more uh, hazel saplings because there's plenty of them and it does need thinning and uh, we'll see what progress we make I'll catch up with you guys then.
morning guys we have just started to pack away the gear I've packed away my tent Lewis has packed away his tent over there <laughs> and we've just had some breakfast in the cabin but before we get cracking on with that shelter I just wanted to show you Ben's tent because I don't know if you saw this yesterday when I was filming it but I've not really seen anything quite like this tent before it's a very unique setup so let me just show you so this is a Slummit Inca it's a one-man tent um, it's got 5,000 millimetre hydrostatic head on it. It's got a flash frame design. So similar to an umbrella, you push a mechanism and the whole thing effectively pops up. It's not, very fast, isn't it? Not quite like a pop-up tent. <laughs> no. Um, and when it's up, it's very, very strong. So if I show you now. That is it. That is... That's literally it. That's the structure of the tent already. Yeah. So... That's amazing. There's a retaining pin there to stop it popping down. And then... Is just one aluminium pole. And I was quite impressed with the rigidity of this tent yesterday, just how sturdy it is. Because you think with a lot of moving parts like this, it could be flimsy. Yeah. Most tents would be flimsy, but actually, it's super rigid and very light. Yeah. <laughs> sturdy, lightweight, very unique design. Shall we get building? Let's build. Let's build. We've decided that we're going to build a little outhouse. So we're going to build it in the exact same style as we built our big shelter. Um, but the purpose of this is for bag storage if we've got lots of people in there, or wood storage, tool storage, that sort of thing. Just an additional place to store things out of the weather and out of sight. So you've used the same principle here? Yeah, we've used the exact same methods that we've used on the big den. Um, it's a crook's frame, and it's already very, very strong. I know, you can swing off that ridge pole. It's definitely definitely strong enough. We're not going full bushcraft, because we do use nails, because you've used nails on the main shelter as well, haven't you? We did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not full bushcraft, but it's look, it's going to last. That's the main thing. It's practical to us. Yeah. So, I mean, it might be more correct to use um, rope rather than using nails, but... It works for us, it works for our needs, Yeah. so we've stuck with it. That's good. So what are we doing after this now? What's the next stage? We've got the frame, what are we doing next? So next we're probably going to be doing some walls. Um, we're going to use this hazel that we've got on the floor. We're going to go and grab a bit more. Um, and we're going to try and weave some walls uh, so that we've got something to protect them from the wind. Brilliant. So for those of you who haven't seen this before, this is our den. Um, it's taken about two years to build it in total. Um, but we really enjoy it and we've now got to the stage where we're using it rather than keeping on building it. Um, nevertheless, we've got this um, door, this wicker door. This is the same sort of idea that we're going to use for the walls on the smaller shelter. All of our walls are made with um, silver birch, which we've filled the holes with mostly pine needles uh, and then chinked it with nice clay that we've sourced from the local stream. This is the roof that we did uh, last time Mike visited us. So underneath we've got peat and soil, and then on top we've put some moss. Now this moss has started to eat into the base underneath it, so it's actually a live roof now, um, and it's able to support itself. So halfway through building this, we decided it might be nice to have a window here so that we can look out to the woods. So we cut this into place um, so that when we're sat inside the den, we can see out. So because we've got a fire inside, uh, ventilation is quite important to us. So when we were building this, we decided we wanted it to be able to be removed. Um, so we built it to shape, we built a frame, and then we wicker weaved this as well. Um, and this whole panel is completely removable. So we can take that down if airflow is an issue, or if there's any backdraft on the fire, um, and we're able to then breathe comfortably. So this is our log storage. This, we didn't really plan this at all, it just sort of happened. We started resting some pieces of wood uh, onto the inside of the wall. Um, we built these legs and now we've got somewhere to store all of our wood. This is the outside of the chimney. We'll have a look inside in a minute and see the fire lit. Um, but these are all reused building materials. So nothing's been bought new, it's all repurposed, unwanted materials. Um, and it's been made with the same clay that we used to chink the walls which we again got from the local stream. This is version three of the fireplace. Um, 
version one we realised didn't work quite so well. We had some heating issues um, and we found that we were actually smouldering some of the wall. So we had to rip it out and we started again. Uh, version two didn't flow well enough. It wasn't a big enough opening um, and it, it just filled the cabin full of smoke. So this is version three, much, much bigger. There's a spark diffuser inside the chimney. Um, and we've also got this um, metal iron grate so that we can get some airflow underneath the fire and it's able to burn much more efficiently. In the roof, we've got some paracord. Because we've got the fireplace, it does actually get very, very warm in here. And if it's been raining outside, it's super, super useful to be able to hang your wet clothing, wet socks, um, and they dry out very, very quickly. And you know, it's also good for lanterns as well. So we're able to move our lanterns to wherever we want them, if we want to light in the middle. Um, and you know, it's a very useful tool for us. So we're in the process of building some raised beds and a raised seating area at the moment. Um, we got these from a fallen tree that blew over in the wind. I've cut it to length, so these are four foot six. I'm gonna get some flat planes of wood so that we put them across here and then we sleep uh, lengthways with our head near the fire. So we've got our tools all set up here. All it is is nails into the, uh, into the wall so we're able to hang whatever we want on here, um, including all of our saws and nails, hammers, uh, and that means that tools are just easily accessible from the door where Mike is, or through the window if we wanted to, um, so that we're able to build more. So we're at a familiar place. I'm holding the GoPro microphone, by the way, guys, because uh, the camera microphone is completely gone. We're at a familiar place, this area. This is actually where we harvested the moss for the roof. And I know a few of you guys commented about uh, the moss and it not growing back. Well, we know that moss is really slow growing, but this is six months ago, this area where we took this moss. Yeah. You wouldn't even know it. Not at all. It's no. grown back completely. If, if anything, it's almost grown back better. <laughs> it's everywhere isn't it because yeah, this was this was this whole patch was brown just dirt where yeah. we pulled it up yeah. but actually you can see it's it's green and it's it's flourishing when we harvested it we made sure that we left like strips of moss so that it's able to um to grow more moss around it yeah we didn't um, cut off the colony as yeah, such exactly. did we it's like but that's yeah. impressive i'm i'm actually surprised I, I know it's slow growing i didn't realize it was it would grow back this fast brilliant so that's impressive yeah I remember this from last time. Absolutely huge. Absolutely huge. These are our hand holes, look. You get to the top, do you? From there? Yeah, we can do, yeah. You first then. Um, <laughs> oh, this is the old trampoline. That's I remember it. this bit. This root <laughs> system is amazing. That's just, nature is awesome. It looks pretty flimsy up there. Did you just dig away the, the dirt then? Yeah, around to, the roots. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. There you go. You're up. <laughs> Don't fall, that's a serious drop. <laughs> that's like the main tap route then would have gone yep. somewhere in the middle here. <laughs> yeah. Shows how shallow their roots are though, isn't it? They just yeah. go out. These conifer trees, just in general, they then have very deep roots. Why it's so tricky. <laughs> That's, yeah, that is. That is just a, a knotted mess of root. Look at the size of that root there. <laughs> That's a chunk. That's like a tree in itself, yeah. that root. <laughs> That's massive. Look at this as well. Yeah. And bigger here. than the hand, bigger than the span of your hand. That's a huge root.
Here is the finished, well, here's the finished from what we could do on this trip of the small storage shack, shelter, whatever you want to call it. We've got the wattle over there, which looks really good. And we managed to finish the rafters as well today. But you can see the, the shape of it. And this is basically uh, done on the same principle as uh, Ben and Lewis's cabin over here, the small... The other, well, I say small, it's a lot bigger than that one. But you can see the similarities, that's for sure. What are you going to do for the roof of that? We're probably going to try and replicate that as close as possible. The same so, again, yeah? yeah. So get a, give it a living roof. Yeah. Yeah, uh, into the background. yeah, it really does. It goes well. Looks great. So that is it. We've run out of time. I've got to get home. Hopefully you have enjoyed this video, boys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks so much. Lovely. Thanks really enjoyed it. I think your shelter's coming along really well. And if you, uh, my subscribers, are interested in following this build, then you need to head on over to BNL Bushcraft on Instagram, and I'm sure the boys will be able to update you with some photos of the progress of this build, but not only that, the progress that they've made with their uh, kind of cabin as well, which has been awesome. Yeah. It's been another really good trip. I've enjoyed it. It's been good. Thanks for coming along. Yeah. No, thank you. And hopefully I'll be back maybe in a few months' time. Yeah. Maybe when there's snow or something That'd be like good. that. Yeah. That'd be good. Cheers for watching, guys, and we'll see you soon.